Hello and welcome back everyone. Um, we are, well, hope you're all well to start with. And we are continuing to focus on uh, health this week, um, uh, but looking at specifically trips to the doctors. It's good to have vocabulary around that because if you're not feeling very well, obviously it's very important that <clears throat> you're able to communicate that. So we're going to start with just um, a listening exercise, just me and George doing a back and forth, back and forth um, asking each other some questions about health in the country. Then we're going to get into um, a worksheet that looks at uh, different ways of describing how you might be feeling uh, and gives you, gives you some facts about colds. And then finally, we've developed um, a slideshow for you um, where we're going to learn some We'll look at some different words, of, uh, pieces of vocabulary, and then do a comprehension together. Now, as ever, all the links will be underneath the video in the bar um, and in order. So just click on them when we ask you to. So just to start off, we're going to do our little bit of talking. So I'll start by saying, George, what are the most popular ways of keeping healthy in your country? Uh, thank you, Tom. So, yeah, my country... Um, I suppose would be England um, and I think probably the most popular would be football um, and is as we all know a uh, worldwide super popular sport um, and yeah I played a little bit of football um, growing up but I think that's probably the most most popular yeah um, so Tom do you think most people worry more about their health as they get older. Yeah, I think that's an easy one. I think everyone does. As you get a little bit older and a little bit weaker, you become a lot more susceptible to various diseases and and and, and also just um, if you're not as strong as you used to be, falling over can, can really hurt. So George, what do you think some people, uh, why do you think, sorry, some people continue bad habits when they know they're damaging to their health? Well, Tom, that's an interesting question. Um, I always uh, think about um, doctors who uh, smoke a lot of cigarettes, even though they know that um, mm. smoking is bad for your health. I think it's probably because habits are, are quite difficult to change and there's a strong um, emotional attachment um, to those habits. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, how do you think children could be encouraged to adopt healthy eating habits? Um, I think uh, education is really important and then I think it's really good to try and um, give children uh, access to uh, good healthy food I think that's a really good a really good one um, and because I got those the, the wrong way around do you want to take the last question and ask it to me yeah of course so uh, do you think people have become more health conscious in recent years? Definitely. I definitely see that a lot. It's, but it's almost, um, we should always look after ourselves and be healthy if we can, but it's almost fashionable to be healthy now. Mm. It's uh, people are spending a lot of money on health foods. You look at supermarkets like Whole Foods and stuff like this. It's definitely, it's definitely trendy to be healthy now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, guys, we're going to move on to the worksheet. So if you take a second, click on the link, first link in the bar, uh, in the box, sorry. And what you see there is the blue box at the top of the, um, of the worksheet. You have words or phrases with, their, with other words or phrases that mean the same thing. Um, the word or phrase on the left, which is in bold, is a more conversational way of saying what what we're trying to say and then the word on the right or the word or the phrase on the right which is smaller is a more formal or official way of, of, of saying the same thing so if you look as well underneath we've got questions one to six and then we have someone who's looking underneath that someone who's looking a bit sorry for themselves telling us some information um so the I'm going to ask you to answer questions one to six using the more formal word or phrase on the right hand side. And then when we come to this conversation with our friend who's feeling poorly underneath, I'm going to ask you to <clears throat> fill in the blanks in what they're saying using the bold phrase or word on, on the left hand side, which is, like I say, a little bit um, 
more conversational, a bit chatty, you might say. So pause the video uh, and find something to write down the, well, I guess you can, you can fill in both parts if you like. And um, when you're back, we will go through it all together. Thank you. So questions one to six, where we're using the uh, more formal phrases. Um, uh, we've messed up, Rosh. Sorry, bit of a technical error, I've messed that up. Anyway, life is good, we got it sorted. So, <coughs> where were we? As if nothing happened. Uh, question number one. Many children catch an ear infection even before their first birthdays. Number two, high fat foods can obstruct our arteries. Question number three, most people recuperate from a cold within a few weeks. The flu usually makes people weak for four to 10 days. A cold continues at its peak for several days, then it gradually ceases or diminishes. They mean pretty much the same thing. And finally, question number six, the human body's immune defenses usually defend against viruses. So I'll give you a second to make any corrections if you need to and rewind if I spoke too quickly for you there or went too quickly for you there and when you're ready, we can do the conversation with our poorly friend. So they're saying, I always come down with colds. In fact, I was suffering from one last week. I hate it when your no nose clogs up so much that you can't even breathe and you feel like you're going to throw up. I'm getting over it now though. People say that you should dose up with vitamin C to fight colds off. I take vitamin C every day, but they still lay me low every autumn. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we've got, um, our friend has also posed us a few questions there. When was the last time you came down with a cold? How long did it take you to get over it? And how did you fight it off? So if in your own time you wanna reflect on those questions, um, what we're actually gonna, what me and George are gonna do now is take you through the cold facts, uh, just reading them out because they're using the, the, the vocabulary that we just learned, and then we'll go into the workshop. So, um, fact number one is children come down with about five to seven colds per year, and adults average about two or three. Uh, fact number two. So. Our noses produce mucus to protect the lungs from germs. The mucus then runs down your throat, out your nose, yes. or clogs up your sinuses. Horrible. Colds lay low more women than men. Most colds let up after seven to 10 days. A fever helps you get over a cold by activating the immune system. Dosing up on antibiotics won't fight off colds because they are viral, not bacterial. Excellent. Right, so um, now we're going to into the worksheet. Like I said, now we're going to share this with you on your screen. Let's just get that up. One second, please. Uh, the uh, screen share is screen there. Share. Top right. Yeah, to uh, full screen up. Cool. So, health vocabulary. Yeah, run the buttons for me. Cheers. So, these are the um, words that we're going to be uh, looking at and then involving in our little story that I've written for you. Um, so, number one, immunity. Number two is patient. Number three, surgery. Number four, antibiotics. Number five, temperature. Number six, flu. And number seven, symptom. So we'll just go through each of the words, what type of word they are, what they mean, and then give you an, an example sentence, just so everyone's got a clear understanding of what we're working with. So 
number one, as I said, is immunity, which is a noun because it, it's, a, it's a thing in this case. So immunity means protection against disease. So for example, uh, I could say to you, after my injections, I have immunity to the flu. Second word, patient, also a noun because it's a thing, in this case, generally a person. Uh, they are a person staying in a hospital or accessing medical services. So I could say two things. I could say, for example, the doctor examined the patient very carefully, but she didn't find any disorder. <clears throat> or to use the plural, there were so many patients in the doctor's surgery that I didn't wait and I went home. Probably a bit silly. Uh, moving on to the next slide, you'll see we have surgery, which is also a noun. Um, a surgery is a place where a doctor or a dentist sees their patients, but it can also be a medical treatment of injuries or diseases involving cutting open someone's body, which we obviously try and avoid. So, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to see a doctor, but the surgery was closed. Or you could say, I hope they can cure me with medicine and I don't need to undergo surgery. At this point, I think I need to see a doctor because I'm coughing. George, can I ask you to read? Yeah, of course. Let's do these. I'll get some water. I was going to say the same thing. So uh, the next one is antibiotics. <laughs> so antibiotics, uh, I'll say that again, antibiotics is a noun. Um, and it's a medicine that kills bacteria and cures infections. For example, my mum's throat infection went away after she started the antibiotics. <laughs> I'm struggling with the word there. Um, another example is hot tea won't be enough to cure your flu. I think you also need antibiotics. Temperature, which is also a noun. Uh, and temperature means the measurement of how hot your body is in this specific health context. So for example, um, to have a temperature, is when your temperature is higher than normal due to illness. Another example would be, I feel so weak, I think I have a temperature. Uh, another example would be, she had such a high temperature that she was immediately taken to hospital. Uh, our next word is flu, which is also a noun. And a flu means a very bad cold. Uh, it's an infectious disease with fever, pains and weakness. So two example sentences are, please don't visit us this week. The whole family has the flu. Another one would be, if you're not careful enough and you don't take antibiotics, you may even die from the flu. Tom, do you want to do our, yeah. our last? Yeah, well, fittingly, my symptoms are better now that I've uh, drunk a glass of water. So that takes us into our final bit of vocabulary, which is symptom, also a noun like all the others. Uh, so a symptom is a change in your body or mind that shows you're not well. So for me just then, it was a cough. Although I am well, I promise. I just had a tickly throat. <laughs> so you don't necessarily need a doctor with symptoms like a headache or a sore throat. Or alternatively, depression can cause physical symptoms too, as, as well as mental ones, that would be. So I'm now going to attempt to read you our story without coughing. Okay, I, I'll, I I'll can, be fine. No, I'm joking. joking. I'm fine. Oh, <laughs> I'm, right, right, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to read you uh, uh, a quick story that I wrote and um, using all of the uh, vocabulary that we've looked at. And then as per usual, I think we've done this quite a few times now, we'll, we'll have a quick um, true or false, yes or no style question and answer session on the final slide. So Sarah woke up one day feeling very sick. She had horrible symptoms, a headache, nausea, and a temperature. She decided to go to her doctor's surgery to see if there was anything they could do for her. When she arrived, the receptionist gave her a piece of paper saying that she was the sixth in line to be seen and asked her to take a seat in the waiting room. If I'm sixth in line, I might be here for a while, thought Sarah. Luckily, there were magazines there to read and pass the time. After what seemed like forever, she heard a voice on the speaker say, patient number six, please. And she stood up and went into the doctor's office. Hello, she said to the doctor. I've been feeling really terrible and I think I might have the flu. Very well, said the doctor. Let me take a look at you then. When he'd finished, he told her, 
I'm afraid it's a bit more serious than the flu. You've actually caught pneumonia. Don't worry though, I'm going to prescribe you some antibiotics. If you take them, get lots of rest and drink lots of water, you should be fine in a week or two. Oh, thank you, doctor. I'm glad I came to see you then, replied Sarah. The next week, Sarah was starting to feel a lot better, but it hadn't been easy and she certainly never wanted to have pneumonia again. She did some research online and found out that eating a diet high in fruit and vegetables and engaging in regular exercise can help boost your immunity to the disease. Right, thought Sarah. I'm going to buy some grapes and apples, then I'm off to the gym. And on to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, I'd invite you to pause the video again at this point. Uh, just note down somewhere whether you think these questions are true, false, or don't know. And, or, you know, we, you don't know the answer because it doesn't say. And then we'll go through it all together. Okie doke. So I hope you're all ready, guys. We'll start with question number one. Sarah woke up feeling healthy, which is false. She woke up with horrible symptoms um, and, um, yes, felt very sick. Question number two. Sarah decided to go to the hospital. Well, this is also false, but it's a bit cheeky, that one. She actually went to her doctor's surgery. Um, so a doctor's surgery is a lot smaller. I think we had it earlier in the... Um, some of the vocabulary. A doctor's surgery is where you would go and visit your, um, your GP, your general practitioner, if you weren't feeling very well. Um, and they, they kind of operate like a business. They might be open from nine till five, you know, like a shop or something. Whereas a hospital is probably more serious. They're a lot bigger. You can have big, big surgeries there. You might stay overnight there. Um, there's a lot more going on. Number three, when Sarah arrived, she was eighth in line. This is false as well, obviously. She was uh, sixth in line, although it still took her a long time to see the doctor. Number four, when Sarah arrived, there was a television screen, television screen, sorry, to help pass the time. This is false, actually. She noticed there were some magazines and that was lucky for her. Number five, the doctor said that what she had caught was not as bad as the flu. This is false. Um, she caught pneumonia. And if you don't know what pneumonia is, it, it is a little bit like the flu, but a lot worse. The flu is pretty bad. Pneumonia is pretty much the same thing. Strange spelling, I know. That's why I included it in the story. Um, but so uh, yeah, if you get pneumonia, that's very serious. And um, although the flu can kill you, the pneumonia can kill you a bit more easy, easily. Sorry. Number six, there was nothing the doctor could do. Now, thankfully, that is false because pneumonia sounds pretty horrible, um, but we can treat it with antibiotics and rest and water and stuff like that. Uh, so that is false, yes. Uh, number seven, the doctor said Sarah would be better in a couple of weeks. This is true. Uh, again, luckily, it sounds like Sarah's relatively young and fit. If you're an older person, pneumonia can affect you for a long time, but... If you look after yourself and you see a doctor and you get medicine, rest and water, a relatively healthy person can be better in a few weeks. Um, the doctor said that exercise would help her recover. False. He actually said that rest was what would help. And that's definitely what you need when you have something in your lungs. Obviously, going and doing loads of exercise would just be horrible. Uh, number nine, Sarah didn't really mind having pneumonia. False. I think she hated it. I, I certainly would myself. And number 10, which kind of proves number nine, Sarah decided to do some research to prevent, prevent her from getting it again. True. She found out that by eating a really good diet with fruit and vegetables and um, staying healthy by doing exercise, you can increase your immunity to pneumonia. And that means that you reduce your chances of getting it. So thank you, everybody. That is us for today. Um, little, <laughs> a few little slip ups there. I hope you don't mind, but I think we got there in the end. Um, hope you're having a good week. Stay happy, stay healthy. Bye now. Bye bye. -bye.